How can Deshaun Foster follow up that dominant recruiting in June? Well, he's got some prospects coming up here in the middle of July. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Locked On UCLA Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson. I'm Thanks for making this show your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, download, review. Thanks for your support. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase to get a nice little discount on that first purchase. Terms apply. But no terms apply here. Because UCLA still has some recruiting to get done in this class of 25 after a very dominant recruiting start for Deshaun Foster. A focus a lot in the class of 24, found ways to go after guys in the portal, has exclusively in the summer months been going after lots of top two recruits, getting in the end, the top threes, top fours, top fives, you know, those final three. He's making his name known, Deshaun Foster, the UCLA recruiting has been on the upswing, right? As detailed in the LA, as detailed by literally every recruit, UCLA is making impacts felt. And there is a big time recruit who is about to commit and potentially might go to UCLA. And this is a a unique kid, one of the three guys we're going to talk about. And mind you, I am recording this early, pre-recording before I I head out of town. So some kids might pre-commit might they might commit they might have already committed they might switch commitments so if you're watching this and wondering what's going on i've already recorded this prior to any crazy commitment switches that may or may not happen so bear with me but we're going to start with dylan robinson who based on his commitment dates that's been announced july 18th this episode will be posted just prior to that dylan robinson is one of the big recruits ucla i think has a real good chance at getting there's no crystal balls out for him He's in a unique position, though. He's listed as an athlete, multiple positions available to him in multiple schools, right? Between Washington, Notre Dame, UCLA. You got some premier schools there, right? You've got Midwest, Premier, South Bend, Indiana. Go get some football. Go to Washington. Just came off the national championship. You got the recruiting hat that is UCLA. He can play receiver. He can go play DB. Or if he wants to go to UCLA, they're looking at him as a safety. Because by that point, Christian Dunbar Hawkins, who is the current Coming in freshman for UCLA as a safety, he'll be a year in. UCLA is going to want more depth at that position depending on how they're going defensively. Right now, the lead recruiter on that is Brian Norwood. So the big thing for UCLA is, can they convince a dual-threat athlete on the gridiron to come to UCLA and not only be a DB, but be a safety? Because, you know, you get the glitz and the glamour of being a wide receiver, although UCLA is in on a couple of receivers who are either already committed and UCLA is trying to flip Isaiah Mosey is one. We'll talk about him in a moment, or they're going to try and go after another upcoming commit. And this guy is probably going to commit after this video is posted. So bear with me, not likely that he chooses UCLA, but Quando Farrakhan, he, he, he's listed between five separate schools. And if he does choose UCLA, that's another indication the Bruins are in the final five, right? They're in the final five within Alabama, and m SEC schools that have a lot of NIL support. And remember, it's a little different now that Nick Saban's not in Alabama. So the big thing is Robinson, who is being wooed by UCLA, who we're focusing on right now to start this podcast, is someone UCLA is recruiting on defense. They've got a couple of skill positions. They've got the quarterback. They just got Jace Brown to go with Madden as a QB one-two punch combo offensively if they want to go with two true freshmen in 25, quarterback and receiver. Bring in Dylan Robinson, who was a four-star product. He's one of the top 10 best athlete products and prospects in college football across the country, which means he's a little versatile, can play multiple positions. And as I've already said, you say looks at him as a DB, as a, as a safety. But obviously, that's the type of guy who, if he's, you know, remember Ish Adams turned himself into an elite returner for UCLA, had some big time returns. And then remember, UCLA could also, hey, why not go both ways? Why not make catch a touchdown? But you can always do that a little bit here and there. So 
the dual threat ability of having somebody who is super athletic, even if he doesn't pan out as a safety, can shift over to corner, can shift over to receiver. Dare I say maybe goes a running back because UCLA in the previous regime had gone quarterback to tight end, done a lot of switching around. Remember Josiah Norwood, quarterback to receiver. If you're a skill position guy, someone like Dylan Robinson is a good guy hailing out of Bonita, 6'3", 190 pounds, ranked four stars on the 24-7s composite, can have a big, big show about when he commits like most of these kids do, but that's just how we do it nowadays. Top 20 in the state of California as recruits. That's a big guy UCLA can get. And I was talking early on after Deshaun Foster was getting all these guys in June, about 14 hard commits, verbal hard commits, for the class of 25 so far for UCLA, they were teetering to top 30, top 25. Now, depending on the ranking, they're in the top 30, top 40. But UCLA, you get a commit like Dylan Robinson, who is going after, you know, he's some very tough schools, some top choices. UCLA is trying to get somebody who has really good bursts of speed. In high school, in a most recent season, had six touchdowns. Over 500 yards receiving, 22 receptions. Had almost 70 tackles and four picks on defense. And the big thing is, reading what they say on 24-7 Sports from Greg Biggins, a national recruiting analyst, his upside is probably highest at safety. Good cover skills, ball awareness, and can get downhill in a hurry to make a tackle with good ball skills. What does that mean? UCLA, if he's so-called, has the highest upside as safety. You're going to get probably the best out of this kid, if that's the case, based on what's been seen in his high school career so far at Bonita. And then, if that's what he's looking at, if he's feeling like he wants to be a safety and isn't chasing that dollar that wide receiver brings or the the diva that brings in the DBs, right? UCLA can get this kid and get him signed. Now, obviously, NIL, recruiting pitches, but here's the biggest thing that could make the biggest difference for UCLA. One, he officially visited Washington back in late May. That was May 31st. Officially visited June 11th in Notre Dame. And according to this calendar that has the official visit dates, Dale Robinson visited UCLA in late June, just before it turned into the middle of July. So at the moment, even though he snuck in a Kansas visit in their official visit, this is a guy that's officially visited UCLA. And if you Listen to one of the podcasts that talked about how UCLA's tripled the recruiting team in size. When kids come to UCLA, they find themselves most likely leaning to UCLA, right? The recruiting staff is going after kids who got good grades, guys who fit the culture. And Deshaun Foster, reading in another article from On3, he, he's just genuine. He's trying not to be a salesman. He's like, let's go. I see you're talented. Of course, this is more of a Norwood recruiting sales pitch, if you will. But they're bringing in guys who, hey, this is your possible best way to get to the next level, to survive in Big Ten football and maybe make it if you're one of the lucky few, if you think about it, high school, college football guys, get it to the NFL and succeed. That's where he's currently listed from Greg Biggins as a guy who can has a high upside, his highest upside as safety, and that's what UCLA wants him as. And certainly look at what they got coming in from the Chip Kelly regime. A lot of that left. So they need a lot of help in the secondary after what's gone over to USC in the transfer portal after Danton Lynn left. So if you're saying, hey, you're going to fight for playing time, there's a lot of it at UCLA. Now, when it comes to skill positions, a little different when you're looking at Quanell Farrakhan Jr. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but he's a four-star receiver. Five, he's in UCLA's in his top five. His commitment date's coming July 13th. It's coming after I post this podcast. It's between Colorado, UCLA, Alabama, Arizona State, Nebraska, and I'll be out of town, so I probably can't get to that with the reaction of sorts. But just think, UCLA is in the top five with a lot of schools there. Between all these former Pac-12 schools, a Big Ten rival in Alabama, that's big time for UCLA to be in the top five of there. So you know, maybe Dylan Robinson isn't going to be needed both sides if they get another receiving commit. But the big one that I saw reported by On3 is a near- target for UCLA. He's already committed to Oregon. That's Isaiah Mosey. He committed to Oregon in April of 24. So he's already verbally committed to Oregon. Now tell me who's already been verbally committed to Oregon and transferred. Now he did go to Oregon. That was, you know, Dante Moore. 
But let's talk about another more. Dakaran Moore just officially committed the top receiver in the class of 25 to Oregon. You're telling me you're going to get two top tier freshman recruits as receiving options at Oregon and they're not going to want to go somewhere else? Well, that's where UCLA can lean into this mosey opportunity. And after an article I was written a couple weeks ago about UCLA looking at mosey, I'm wondering, hey, could they flip that after Moore just commits to Oregon, the top receiving commit recruit in the class of 25, which can mean Mosey, who did get an offer from UCLA after he committed to Oregon a month and a half later, we've already seen UCLA can pull the NIL dollar to flip an Oregon guy to UCLA late in the cycle. Now it's fairly early. It's July of 24. We've still got half the year basically left before guys can even sign. But UCLA's already done this before. Chip Kelly proved you can do it in Battle, Oregon, in the freshman recruiting saga. UCLA's already beaten Dan Lanning at this game. And while, yes, Dan Lanning can take the number one receiver, UCLA would love someone who is a four-star composite, one of the top two recruits in the state of Missouri, and bring him to UCLA. And if UCLA likes him, hey, they could probably sneak in. If they're going to switch that at the last minute, a kid who's already committed to Oregon, and if Quanell goes to Alabama or somewhere else. Maybe you can sneak in a flip and all of a sudden get a flip commitment, add in a top tier safety, and you've got two guys that can push UCLA into that top 25, maybe top 20 in overall national recruiting classes. And that would be just icing on top of the cake, ice cream, whatever you want to put it on your brown. Who cares, right? That would be a win for Deshaun Foster if he hasn't been winning at recruiting already. All right, speaking about winning, you got to win and get to a bowl game. And UCLA still going to be playing as a Pac-12 member. Let's talk about that next on Locked on UCLA. Let's talk about game time because you're going to want to go to see in a big time event. You, you've seen enough of soccer on the TV and you're like, I want to go watch some baseball and all. You know, you want to go see something in person. Well, game time has got all the tickets. They're an official ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. And they make tickets getting faster, easier, whatever it may be. Prices actually go down near first pitch because last-minute deals. We all know Angelinos, we're going to think about it last minute or go last minute. So you're going to get 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy. Do it. Go make it happen. And you can see where you're sitting, a panoramic view from where you might sit. And you don't get stuck behind a foul pole or some ugly viewing spot in an archaic arena that's still a classic. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase after you create an account and download the app. Terms apply. Again, Locked On College, L O C K E D C O L L E G E, Locked On College for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, cruising on here, second segment for Locked On UCLA. And it might be a little bit older news now by the time the pod has dropped. But by the time I record it, a little bit newer news. It was UCLA, one of the, an article written by Brett McMurphy on the Action Network, where the Bruins, you know, if you're not a part of the 12-team playoff, and as much as I'm high and mighty and optimistic about the Bruins, I'm not sure I'm going to slap them in as one of those 12 teams make the playoff in the first year of Deshaun Foster, that would shock everybody, which means even to still shock everybody, surpassing the win total given to them, whether it's be four and a half, five and a half, you'd still get to go bowling. And at this moment, they have not cut bowl games because they're still so, so fun. And they're honestly turning into the NIT of college football, but individual games all around December and now into late to mid January at this point, UCLA, is going to be playing under the Pac-12 marker. So I, I, one of the recent pods I had dropped said, all right, the Pac-12 legacy lives on because UCLA kept their you know, rivalry with Cal. They canceled the Auburn game. They canceled the Georgia games for seeing iconic venues, meeting new fan bases, getting to new regions of college football with your team sported across your chest, seeing iconic – Pre-game tailgates, post-game tailgates, barbecue, whatever it may be. Those games got canceled. But 
if you still want to do it with the Pac-12 logo on it, UCLA is still, and all these Pac-12 teams, contracted to not just one, but two bowl seasons, apparently, until the 26th year, right? So 24-25, you're going to be able to play in bowl games as a Pac-12 member. So I wonder, remember, UCLA, they could still get a holiday bowl in. Wouldn't that be the most ironic thing? UCLA, as a member of the Big Ten, goes to the Holiday Bowl, representing the Pac-12, and then plays NC State, right? Wouldn't that be super funny? If you think about it, remember how UCLA famously pulled out last minute with COVID in the 21 game, and technically that extended the bowl, the lack of bowl games appeared in for UCLA, but they certainly qualified and would have been in a bowl game in 21 if they didn't pull out. They were. I think the biggest and funniest opportunity as a Pac-12 legacy school and Oregon State and Washington State, they still have bowl contracts. And you know what's the biggest thing? TV money and contracts in college football. That's what runs almost all of college athletics at this moment, other than literally March Madness. Other than March Madness, it's, wrote, it's written up by TV contracts for college football. And you know what it's written up? UCLA can still go to an Alamo Bowl. They can still go to the Holiday Bowl, the Sun Bowl, all these fun opportunities, the L.A. Bowl. I don't think they'll do that again. But remember, the Rose Bowl is not tied to the Rose Bowl game is no longer tied to specifically the Pac-12 and the Big Ten because of its battle and connection to the sport in the playoff. While the Rose Parade and the game will still be close to its iconic time and on the iconic date, New Year's Day, UCLA is able to go and get to the Alamo Bowl. So any Pac-12 legacy school can get to some of these bowls. And I'm, I'm hoping for what I want in a dream scenario of ironic proportions would be UCLA – to play NC State in a Holiday Bowl in years coming up. Now, it would be kind of funny if in the future UCLA played Cal in a bowl game and it was in one of these local venues. Now, that would be pretty entertaining, but with UCLA and Cal playing the regular season, that's not as important. But what I really want is a Holiday Bowl in 24 or 25 with UCLA playing NC State. And then that would just right all the wrongs or give everybody the last laugh and we could have a good chuckle. All right, that's what I really want in these next couple of college football seasons because as much as I'm high and mighty into Sean Foster with what he's doing, I'm not sure they're going to crack the 12-team playoff right away in his tenure with what he had to do this late in the recruiting cycle for 24. As I've already said, I'm high on his 25 class, but still, UCLA is probably, at best case, Holiday Bowl, Alamo Bowl at the best case scenario. Now, if they shock everybody, and sneak into conversation for the playoff, who cares about these Pac-12 bowl game ties? But they still last until prior to the 26th year, which means Oregon, UCLA, USC, Washington, the Arizona schools, Colorado, Utah, Cal Stanford, all can't participate in new bowl games with their new conferences until 2026. That is hysterical. That is amazing. And a hey, Pac-12 after dark, it will not die. We, not, we might not be able to watch it on the network anymore, but it still won't die just yet. Now, until we get a bowl game with two former Pac-12 schools going at it, it won't be weird until then. All right, so I'll be excited for that. Speaking of weird, the new game is coming out soon, right? Well, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? We'll talk about that next on Locked on UCLA. Well, the way the podcast has been recorded, it is going to release, this episode is going to release prior to the launch of College Football 25, because it is coming back after a long, long wait of the last one, which I actually have. I have the, was it, the PS3 version. I've played it on the Xbox 360, played my buddy with, you know, we've had so many fun battles. Of course, I loved it because you have UCLA. With Brett Hundley in the mix, you've got all sorts of funny business. You can have Anthony Barr race through the line. Those are all the fun stuff, right? I was never the one in college football 
I'm not the biggest gamer in and of itself, but I certainly love that game and battling other opponents. And I always loved playing my friends with UCLA, literally go to the Rose Bowl, go on the road, play with an iconic crazy game. I think the craziest thing I ever did against the friend was what down 18 with them having the ball come back, win the game. Crazy things. That, that was probably the best football game ever played, ever invented. And now it goes for like so much money in the secondary market. Now we're so glad that they're bringing this back. And whatever you think about Matt in the video game and what EA, you know, all those different things, we hope that the up tempo ability is there. And what's unique now is with the college football playoff invented, as dumb, as dumb as people might think it is, and it's ruining an NIL, right? 12, whatever. We love bowl season. It will make interest. It will be very interesting now that there's a tournament scenario in the video game, right? I think it'll be fun to get into a 12. And if they could add on the part where, yes, you can build your own school, you can have dynasty mode, player mode, you can have your own simple school. Like if I were to do it, I would just simply go with UCLA and get through the Big Ten, right? Just boom, 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 boom. Or would you go if you play the game and then make restage the Pac-12 or Pac-10 or Pac-8 or maybe go back old school PCC, whatever it may be for UCLA? Or you just have a, a conference of California-only schools. I, I want – just hit in the comments what you think you would do, what school you'd play with. I would assume if you're watching or listening to this channel, it would be UCLA. But if for some reason you're a UCLA fan and you choose another school – or you choose an FCS school or create a new school entirely, what one would you use? And how many seasons have you played? Like I've never gone too many seasons deep, but still the excitement is there. I hope the up-tempo is there, the ridiculous catches, the ridiculousness of everything that was in the previous game almost a decade ago. And I hope we can get a lot out of it with UCLA and all the fun stuff, right? And I guess it's good now they got Deshaun Foster who'll be walking the sidelines. At least I hope they don't stick Chip Kelly. They better update that bad boy. But they got Deshaun on the sidelines. You're going to have Ethan Garbers going in there. Of course, the big highlight early was TJ Harden. The idea of you know Arch Manning being – who cares about that? It's about UCLA football getting in there, having a packed Rose Bowl, and let's have fun. So let me know what you're going to do and how, you're, how many titles you're going to win with UCLA in the game and how that proved to be true in real life. All right, so I have, hope you'll have a lot of fun playing it, liking this podcast, and we'll try and talk our best about, you know, will these kids come in? Well, is UCLA going to get a top-tier recruiting class? We'll talk about that and more in future Locked on UCLA episodes. In the meantime, I'm out of town, so if you're looking for recruiting news, everything, might be a little hit and miss for a week there, and then we'll be back on Locked on UCLA. So get your hands up, Bruins fans. It clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been locked on UCLA. Zach signing off. Go Bruins.